Hello, guys, and welcome to 7 1. Chapter 7 All Things Polygonal. Um, first off, first section angles of polygons. What is the sum of the measures of interior? And then we're going to take a look at some of the exterior angles in any polygon. So, first off, a polygon. Two vertices that are endpoints of the same side are called consecutive vertices. The diagonal of a polygon is a segment that joins two con non consecutive vertices. So don't go B to C, but go B, D, B, E. Those are diagonals. Um, as you can see, diagonals from one vertex divide a polygon into triangles. So what we're talking about in this section, when we find the sum of the measures of the angles of a polygon, it all is derived from the fact that you can split polygons up into our old friends, the triangle. And the number of triangles you have, in this case three, will always be two less than the number of sides that the shape has. So for instance, if I have a four-sided figure, I can break it up into two triangles. This five-sided figure gets broken up into three triangles. One, three, four, five, six. The six-sided figure will break up into one, two, three, four triangles. So it's always two less, two less triangles than sides you have. And that's where we derive the theorem 7-1, the interior angle theorem. So anytime we have a polygon, we just take the number of sides, we subtract two, and then we multiply it by 180 to find the degrees for the interior angles. Why 180? Because that's what a triangle is, 180 degrees in a triangle. So this hexagon here, I'm breaking up into four 180s. So I have six sides, I subtract two, and then I multiply that by 180 because that's the number of triangles I have. So I have four triangles, essentially. No, no, no. So this formula you won't have to memorize. Um, I'll give it to you on quiz or test. But uh, it's pretty simple. You should probably be able to remember it anyway. N minus 2 times 180. So in example 1, I'm trying to find some of the measures of the interior angles of this figure. Ew. How many sides do I have in example 1? Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the sum is going to equal 8 minus 2 times 180. And you're going to need a calculator for this section, my friends. That gives me 1080. All right, and that's just not, that's not only for this particular octagon. That's all octagons. A stop sign with the regular octagon. Any, anything that has eight sides, eight angles, is going to add up to 1080. All right, let's pause the video and try the monitoring progress question. All right, back again. An 11-sided figure. So the sum of the interior angles is 11 minus 2 times 180. So that's 9 times 180. And I'm going to get 1620. So all 11 sided figures have 1620 degrees when you add up their angles. All right, a second example. Now, if you know the sum, how can you work backwards to classify the polygon by its number of sides? Well, you're going to use the same formula, but now you know the left hand side. So the sum is 900. We're working it backwards to find how many sides we have. So, um, easiest way is to not distribute, but instead just divide your 180 right off the bat. So 900 divided by 180 is 5. So 5 equals n minus 2. So therefore, n add 2 to both sides, a 7-sided figure would have a 900 degrees in its interior angles. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Example three, finding an unknown interior angle measure. Find the value of x in the diagram. All right, so now if we have all the angles except for one, 
based on the fact that we know what they add up to, we should be able to figure this out. So I've got one, two, three, four-sided figures. So four-sided figures add up to 360. And if we didn't know that, you just plug it in here. Four minus two times 180. So my sum is two 180s or 360. Now once you know that, set your equation up. 360 has to equal 108 plus 121 plus 59 plus x. And then we just simply subtract all of those off of 360 and we're left with 72. 72 degrees for the last angle. All right, pause the video here. Try the monitoring progress questions when you get back. All right, some of the measures is 1440. So 1440 would go on the left, and I am looking to solve for the number of sides. Divide both sides by 180. And add 2 and should be 10 decagon number three quadrilateral so I know it's 360 equals x plus 3x plus 5x plus 7x All right. so 4 9 16 x is 16 X is 22.5, and they want to know all the interior angles, so then you just have to plug it back in. So that's one of your angles, so then three times that would be 67.5, five times that is 112.5, and seven times X is 157.5. So just get your X and plug it back in to find your four angles. And if you want to check at the end, make sure they add up to 360. All right, the last concept for today is when we talk about equilateral, equiangular, and regular. We talked about this before. Triangles are the only shape where your equilateral and your equiangular are the same thing. So an equilateral triangle has the same sides, same angles. But once you get above three sides, that is no longer the case. An equilateral polygon, as you can see here, may not have angles all the same. And an equiangular polygon, like right here, may not have all the sides the same. But when that does happen, it's called a regular polygon. So this has all sides and angles the same. So keep that in mind. Example four, finding angle measures in polygons. A home plate for a baseball field is shown. Is the polygon regular? So we look at this polygon, and as soon as we see, let's see, we have 90s, 90, 90, that, but then E and C are not 90 degrees. So we would say, no, angles not all equal. And then for part B, find the measure of C and E. Well, let's see here. We have one, two, three, four, five different angles. So we would say the sum of the angles would be five minus two times 180. So three 180s is 540. And then we can take the 540 and set that equal to all of these angles add together. So 390s, so 90, 90, 90, and then we'll have to call E and C, we'll just call them X. Since they're the same, we only have one variable and we can solve it. So subtract 90, 90, 90 off of 540, and then divide it by two, and these angles would both be 135. So again, you got to find the sum first, and then state the five angles that are going to make up the 540, and solve it. 
All right, using exterior angle measures of polygons. All right, so on the outside, it's pretty neat. You don't uh, have to do N minus this or that. It's always 360. No matter how many sides you have, um, the exterior angles will always add up to 360. They'll always approximate a circle. And if you cut them out and we all get back together in class, we could do this little experiment and see that all the exterior angles always add up to 360. And you think, well, what about a triangle? Say if you had a 60-60-60 triangle, the exterior angles. So if you had a 60 on the inside, you'd have a 120, a 120, and a 120, which adds up to 360. So even though your insides are 180, your outsides are 360, no matter what. So, boom. Always 360. Five-sided figure, 360. Four-sided figure, 360. So example five. Finding an unknown angle measure. So here are four exterior angles. All we have to do now is set them equal to 360. So 2x plus x plus 89 plus 67. And subtract them all off of 180 and divide by 3. And you get x is 68. For that one. Example six, finding angle measures in regular polygons. Ah, regular. So this makes it nice. The trampoline shown is shaped like a regular dodeca. So dodeca is 12. Don't worry on a quiz. I'll make sure you know how many sides your thing has. If you don't have to go to your Latin prefixes or anything like that and memorize that stuff. You should be good to go with me just telling you the number. All right, now check us out, guys. A, find the measure of the interior angle. So you can do this first, but it's harder. The exterior angle is the easier one to find first because you know it adds up to 360. So just take 360 divided by 12, and you get 30. So the exterior angles, now keep in mind, they would be like one of each vertex. So there's your exterior angles. And if you have 12 of them, they're all going to add up to 360, so you have 30s. But now here's what's cool about it. An interior angle and an exterior angle are always going to be supplementary. So, for instance, this exterior angle and the interior angle there have to make up 180. So all you got to do now, you can backtrack, and you can just take 180 minus 30, to know that part A would be 150. So together, an interior and exterior are supplementary, and it's easier to find the exterior, so I would recommend doing that first, even if it's posed like this. And part A, hey, find the interior. Because the interior one, you have to take N minus 2 times 180 divided by N and set that equal to in this case, 12 minus 2 times, you'd have to find the sum of the interior and then backtrack it like that. And then, you know, like I said, it's doable, but it's a lot more work as opposed to just going straight to the exterior and dividing it by how many sides you have. So, there you go. All right, pause the video. See what you got right here for this last one. All right, welcome back. Convex hexagon has exterior angles. All right, what is the measure of the sixth exterior? Well, as soon as you see exterior, you know it adds up to 360, 34, 49, 58, 67, 75. One, two, three, four, five. All subtracted off of 360, and you're left with 77. All right, so hopefully this video treated you well. Um, peace.